In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through the basics of car batteries. So what you look for in a condition check, the information that's actually on the battery, what it relates to, and then some basic testing that you can do with simple equipment like a multimeter and an amp clamp. Before we jump straight to the testing, there is some initial checks that you should always do. You wanna do a visual of the battery. You wanna check around the whole case and make sure it's not bulged or no leaking coming from it, cracks or any visual damage. Check that the battery is clamped and secured. I have seen them where they're moving around and loose and that can cause additional tension on the leads. You, of course, wanna check for corrosion, which in this case, you can see that there's corrosion present over this side down here. Uh, you wanna check between the battery terminal and the lead itself. Make sure it's not loose and do that on both sides. Once we have those initial checks done, we go on to have a look at the battery reading. So if you look here, we have CCA 430 and we have RC 75. In some cases, you might just see CA like that. And that stands for cranking amps. And cranking amps is the amount of amps it can sustain over a 30 second period while also maintaining a minimum voltage. CCA is similar to that, except it's cold cranking amps. So cold cranking amps is measured at a freezing temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius. And that's the difference between one to another. RC is a time measurement. It's called reserve capacity. And that reserve capacity is the amount of minutes a fully charged battery can continue to supply, typically an amount of 25 amps before the battery reaches a predetermined minimum level of 10.5 volts or 1.75 per cell. So that's what that information is. In some cases, you may get the date of the battery as well, which can be useful. And note that down because these could be uh, incorrect for your vehicle. Now that I have the initial walkthrough done on the vehicle and then I'm gonna be doing all the testing on, I wanted to bring you back to this BMW battery because there is a couple of differences on this one and also we have additional information. So if you look up to the top corner here, we do have RC. I'll just try and give you, a, you can see RC, but we have 105 AH as well. So that's amp hour, what that stands for. And amp hour is a steady flow of current the battery can deliver for a period of time. So on this one, we have 105, meaning 105 amps capable for an hour or one amp for 105 hours. But these battery companies rate these for 20 hours. So that's where the measurement comes from this. So if you wanted to get your batteries rating, you would simply put in whatever it is. So in this case it's 105, you divide that by 20 and this battery is capable of 5.25 amps for 20 hours. That's what this can do. Now the other bit of information is this is an AGM battery. So where this would be useful is a stop start vehicle, for example. An AGM stands for absorbent or absorbed glass mat. And the makeup uh, is different than a regular flooded battery. So that's all you really need to know. It's a different style, different makeup. It's used in stop start uh, vehicles because of its capabilities of repeated charging and discharging. It's able to have a lot longer life with those conditions than if you put in a regular flooded battery into one of those. It has lower internal resistance, um, which is capable of higher voltage output and shorter charge times. It's completely sealed and spill proof as well, and they are more vibration resistant. So they're meant to be vibration resistant compared to other uh, battery styles. But if you have, a battery that you're looking at, you need to make sure that the style of battery is the correct one that goes into your vehicle. And just before we start the test, you might be asking, well, why would I need to know these numbers? Well, batteries are very temperature sensitive. So if you live in a very cold climate or you're going into winter, the cold cranking amps is going to be important because it's harder to start at cold temperature. So that rating, the higher it is, the uh, typically better the battery will perform in cold weather conditions. The other one, RC, that'll be useful for you if your alternator stops charging because it's a re reserve capacity. So how long it could power your electrical system 
before um, it completely discharges. Remember, a battery is a storage device. It's being fed charge in by the alternator and having that reserve capacity should the alternator fail will allow you to get to a destination to get either safely home or get some work done on it. Okay, so the first test we're going to do is we have our multimeter here. We're going to set it up to a voltage DC, which is this one here with the lines going through it. And how we do that is simply cross the pulse directly on it and we get a reading in this case of 12.66 which is an excellent reading and um, general rule of thumb 12.2 and below is classed as bad 12.3 to 12.4 is okay 12.5 and above is a good battery now make sure you have a good connection directly on that another thing you can do quickly is just move the leads and put it on to the actual clamps themselves and see if you're having a good reading come th through there. What I know straight away is there's some surface rust on this clamp, so you wanna be certain that you're getting a good connection so that you can get a stable voltage come through and you see it drops back to 12.66 there, which is a good reading. Now, one thing to consider is if you have a high surface charge, let's say that's 12.8 and above, 12.7 and above, you may want to put on the headlights for 15, 20 seconds to take some of the surface charge out of it and retest it. The other one is if it's very low, had you the ignition on, is there something that's draining it down? Did the vehicle sit for a very long period of time? Having 12.2 and below doesn't necessarily mean the battery is bad. So consider the conditions which led to get to that. Another test that I would highly recommend doing, especially if you have corrosion on the terminals, is called a voltage drop test. So measuring from the terminal to the lead to check to see if there's any voltage drop across it. The expected results would be as close to zero as possible. In this case, I would be expecting zero. So we're going lead and uh, negative to negative on the leads. So on the terminal and on the lead. And we have zero and we'll do the same on the positive. So we put it straight onto the battery post and onto the lead and we wait for it to stabilize down and we have zero. And that's an excellent uh, gauge to see if the voltage is transferring through from the lead into the battery itself. So the next test I'm gonna do is a battery load test or also called a battery crank test where we, we wanna see a minimum voltage reading of not less than 9.6 while we're cranking the engine over. Now, this is something you can repeat the test a couple of times to see if it drops down after repeated use. And in this case, we're also gonna be utilizing a minimum maximum feature on the multimeter so we can catch those readings. Now, I'm just gonna put my leads directly into the clamps like that because there's a section where they hold in. If you hadn't, got that type of setup on your battery you can get an alligator clamp like that and then the multimeter can uh, feed directly into the back so i'm just going to crank it over but beforehand we just press the minimum max if you didn't have that feature you could record it with your phone so you could get the reading and um, repeat it or have that up on the windscreen if your leads are long enough and you can have a visual check of it so let's crank that over now Okay, so I've knocked off, we get to see the maximum. This is when the alternator kicks in and then we click back here and we get a minimum of 8.8 .8 volts. So that's just after one start. So this is showing that this battery is getting weak. You could kind of hear it in the sound of it as well and um, that it wasn't rated too high, but I'm gonna do that test one more time and see what it comes with. And now it's dropped to 8.72 on that. So as this gets repeated use, unless it gets more charge, we'll probably get a lower and lower reading as we go. Another check we can do is a sustained crank to see what type of voltage it could maintain. If we disconnect uh, the likes of the fuel supply or the ignition, uh, we can do a constant crank and check that over.
Okay, so I'm back on this vehicle again now and I have since cleaned up the negative terminal. I've removed that lead, cleaned all around it, and I'm going to do an extended load test. So this is a test that can be done with what's called a carbon pile load tester. So you would look at the CCA of the battery and you would typically apply half of that amount of amps for 15 seconds and then measure the voltage of the battery and make sure it doesn't drop below 9.6 we don't have that equipment here you're not going to have that equipment at home so we're just going to do a version of that that you can do yourself using the um, starter as the load on the battery and we can measure that load with an amp clamp so how i have it set up here is i have my amp clamp it's got to be capable of doing dc and it's got to be rated high enough so this is capable of reading 600 amps so we're going to put that on we have to make sure it's dc which it is i'm going to hook that up there and hopefully you have a view that's all ready to go i'm going to jump in and crank this now now i have disconnected the fuel injectors in this case so it won't start you have to be able to get keep the extended crank time going if you just wanted to get the peak voltage of the um, starting current you could set the minimum max scale on this and you would get that but we'll have a visual reading because i want to see the continuous um amp uh, draw that's coming through there so the current draw that we have we'll read here and we, we don't want to see less than 9.6 here so let's crank the engine over now We could see when initially cranked it was over 170 on the peak and then it came down to 110 to around 130 was kind of bouncing around in the amount of current that was coming through. So we have a CCA rating of 430 on this. That test would be done on a test machine at 215 for 15 seconds but it's still a very good test we could see the amount of draw we could see the voltage um, stayed above where we would want it. If we wanted, we could put on the lights as well as we're doing it. We could try and put on some extra draw. But that is just an idea if you want to do a load test and an extended crank time to get an idea of your battery. That is a, a very useful one that you can use as well. And that is it for this video. That is the basics of battery uh, information and battery testing that you can do yourself on your vehicle using simple tools like a multimeter and an amp clamp. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.